Hello and welcome to another Royal Society Publishing video podcast. Today we're talking to Professor Peter Sadler who recently guest edited an issue of Phil Transe on the photochemistry of metal complexes. Peter, can you tell us what we mean by a metal complex? Um, well, a metal complex, as I can illustrate with this model, it's a very good time to be asking what a metal complex is because it's 100 years since Alfred Werner won the Nobel Prize for really just telling us what a metal complex really is. Over 100 years ago, they didn't really understand. But a metal complex is a metal ion, and I've got uh, a brown metal ion in the middle here, a metal ion plus uh, what we call the ligands. So these other colored balloons are forming bonds with the central metal ion here and forming what we call a metal complex. And it illustrates that a metal iron is not naked when it's in solution. Even if we dissolve common salt, sodium chloride in water, we would have the sodium ions in the middle, and around it, these would all be water molecules stuck to the sodium ion. And as we'll see with other metal ions, like platinum, we have other ligands. They don't have to be water. They're just stuck to the central metal ion. So this is a, a complex ion here. It's the metal plus the ligands. And the properties of the metal are determined largely by also the properties of the ligands. If we change the ligands, we can dramatically change the properties of the metal complex, and we can change the photochemistry, the ability of a molecule to absorb light and then to undergo photochemical reactions will be heavily dependent not only on the metal, but also on the ligands in the metal complex. Uh, this is what we would call an octahedral complex. It's got six ligands. If I take two of them away, let me take away the green ones here. I might have then a square planar metal complex. This might be platinum in the middle, and these might be four ligands in a square plane. If these were ammonia molecules, two of them in blue, if these were chloride ions here, let's say in orange, then this would be the anti-cancer drug uh, cisplatin, two ammonias, two chlorides an anti-cancer drug used in all of, our major, all of our major hospitals for the treatment of cancer. Interestingly, you could see I can make isomers of this molecule by swapping these two around. Instead of the cis isomer, I can make the trans isomer. And interestingly, transplatin does not kill cancer cells. So it does matter where the ligands are arranged around the metal ion in space. This demonstration should illustrate how light can bring about a chemical reaction. In this test tube, we have some iron, soluble iron, iron 3 plus, ferric iron. This is the sort of iron you find in nature. Often it's insoluble, it's sort of rust. But microorganisms, for example, in the sea can solubilize the iron 3 plus in this sort of form by excreting so called siderophores. And then they want to turn the iron 3 plus into more reactive iron 2 plus. And they can use sunlight for that. And we'll try to show you how light can turn the iron 3 plus into iron 2 plus. And Nicola is going to demonstrate that. She's going to add a reagent that can de detect the iron 2 plus and hopefully will show you that light can indeed initiate chemical reactions of a metal complex. With the iron oxalate, when you irradiate with blue light, you lose an oxalate ligand and therefore transform iron 3 plus into iron 2 plus. So here we have the lovely Prussian blue colour. And there is what it originally was. So what happens chemically when we use light to activate metal complexes? I can illustrate uh, that again. Uh, let me uh, make this octahedral platinum. This is actually a sort of research we're carrying out in my research group at the moment. We could have platinum with six ligands, octahedral platinum. This would be platinum four plus now. And we synthesize molecules that are unreactive, they don't kill cancer cells at all, and we hope they'll be harmless when they're put into the body. We hope they'll then go into cancer cells, and if we irradiate those cancer cells with a light beam, and we can do that selectively so we only hit the cancer cells, then we can photoactivate this molecule to make it reactive and kill the cancer cells. And what happens then is that the light is absorbed, the molecule changes its shape and that's the thing about light, you put energy into the molecule, it changes its shape, the bonds change in energy and we can convert this from 
octahedral platinum 4 plus to square planar platinum 2 plus, the sort of cisplatin type drug that I just showed you that does kill cancer cells. So this is really something that you might see in therapy in the future, photochemotherapy. How do scientists study the photochemistry of metal complexes? Well, the study of these molecules is, is of course, interesting. Uh, when we realize that when we shine light on this molecule, things can happen very, very quickly. Within a millionth of a billionth of a second, or a thousandth of a billionth of a second. That's a time scale of femtoseconds or picoseconds. Very, very short time scale. The light is absorbed and the bond lengths can change. The shape of the molecule can change. We call this an excited state molecule. We put energy into the molecule, the electrons have moved into different areas of the molecule. After it's electrons that are making bonds, electrons are determining how strong this bond is. If I now change the electron distribution, I might weaken this bond. This ligand then might come off. So we are changing the reactivity of the molecule in the excited state on a very short time scale. So we need new methods of studying such events on a very short time scale. The goal of this research, this part of the research, is to study the mechanism by which um, anti-cancer complexes uh, are photoactivated. We bounce a light off a number of these optics and um, the bottom line is that we have a, a UV light pulse that activates the complex. It, it releases a, essentially a ligand. But what we see is here is some data that's collected. This is a spectrum of your, the, the pro pulse that we study at different time delays. So this is, this is in femtoseconds, a millionth of a billionth of a second. So we can collect these spectra at very well-defined time delays, and that tells us important information about the, the dynamics. In other words, how fast this complex is breaking apart. And is there such a thing as discovering new metal complexes? Uh, there is, there is indeed. Uh, lots of scope. I think we, we, we don't understand the number of complexes that you could make. A, a huge range of photoactivatable metal complexes can be synthesized. In fact, again, in my research group, we're trying to make new reactive complexes that would liberate uh, certain kinds of reactive molecules. And our job is to learn how to design them, really, because we want to be able to activate them with different colors of light. We want to be able to activate things with red light. If we want the red light to penetrate deeply into the tissue, if it's on the surface, we can activate with blue light. And we're learning new ways of activating molecules. We can take a laser and fire two pulses very fast. And so we can get those pulses to add their energies together. We can get two packets of energy into a molecule at the same time. So we can fire two red pulses and excite a molecule with UVA light effectively, because two pulses enter the molecule very quickly. And there are other ways also of up-converting light, taking long wavelength light and converting it into short wavelength light. So lots of advances in the technology that are being studied at the moment. The 800 nanometer passes through this crystal, a non-linear crystal, and it gets converted to blue light. So you essentially frequency double that light from 800 nanometers to 400 nanometers. So you mentioned previously that metal complexes can be used um, in medicine. Can you tell us a little bit more? There is in the clinic at the moment something called photodynamic therapy. It tends to be organic molecules, but there are some metal complexes beginning to be used uh, where you administer a compound, it's absorbed by cancer cells, and then in photodynamic therapy, uh, oxygen in those cells is converted into a highly reactive form of oxygen. We call it singular oxygen. So cancer therapy is one possible area where you might then be able to selectively irradiate the cancer and not damage the normal tissues. There is the side of delivery of uh, carbon monoxide, delivery of nitri nitric oxide uh, as a photoactivated delivery. We have a, an unreacted molecule again shine the light on it and it liberates an active molecule like carbon monoxide or nitric oxide. So those kinds of applications we can foresee in the clinic uh, in, in years to come, I think. And what's next for the field of metal photochemistry? This whole area requires interdisciplinary thinking, I think. All the way from the physics, how you generate the light, the laser technology, the, the pulses that you can use, the fiber optics that you can use. We're learning how to design metal complexes, again, where theory comes into its own. If I wanted to design a compound that absorbs red light, 
What kind of ligands do I put on my metal ion? Can I predict them using density functional calculations? If I can, I can decide which ones are best for me to make. And then following the photochemical reactions, again, using uh, laser technology, using synchrotron pulsed X-ray technology, uh, quite difficult but challenging and really is going to give us enormous insight into how molecules decompose on, the, on very short time scales. All the way through to biochemical, biotechnological applications in cells, imaging DNA, all the way through to therapy in the clinic. How do we administer light to patients? What kind of, kind of complexes do we, do we use? What kind of use would it be to deliver carbon monoxide or nitric oxide? What kind of disease conditions could we treat? Would it be inflammation? Is it going to be vasodilation of the blood vessels? Is it going to be in transplant therapy? Maybe there are many other applications that are really, at the moment, only just beginning to be explored. Again, we need this interdisciplinary approach between the clinicians and the medical people and the biologists and the chemists and the physicists really quite an exciting array of interdisciplinary technology. Thank you very much and thank you for watching.